Hey, what's up, guys? It is still Beardless Goham here. Today, we've got 125 mods on the testing list. Well, all those 19 mods were released today. We got a new DLC coming, and it's got the same name as the mod. At least it did. And we got four modders to talk about, including updated information on current and future mods from Celebuki and Mapper's Paradise. Let's check it out. Starting off with our mods and testing. Today, we've got 125 mods on the list. 84 of those are in Stage 1 or PC testing, and 41 are in Stage 2 or console testing. The testing list is all over the place today with PC mods spread around console mods, stuff like that. So I'm just going to be going through them in alphabetical order of PC and console mods like normal. Some notable mods on the PC list include Agley Farm, Alma, Missouri, and Alone in the World. Also in PC testing, we have Colored Light Pack, Deadwood, Dredge Creek, Alaska, and Hay Drying Plant Ilm. Rounding out that PC list, we've got Instant Bell Fermenting, Liftable Bells Pack, Lizard Kim Takes, Mac Anthem, Simple Midwest 4X, and Tyrolene White Creek Valley. Jumping down to our console mods and testing, we have a few notable ones like Alpen Hill, Animal Product Warehouse, and Anthem 6x4 Pack. Also on the console list, we have Greenhouse Modular, John Deere S7, and the Hydroglide XL Header Storage. Rounding out console testing, we have New Holland TK4 Series, Rent Your Stable, Resistance Weight, and Three Sided Farm Pack. With all that being said, we still have 166 mods that he waited to be tested, and the current average waiting type of newly submitted mods is about eight workdays. In addition to the mods and testing, 19 new and updated mods were released today on the in game mod hub. All platforms got nine new and one update, and PC and Mac players got six new and three updates. I've already made a video showing these off, so make sure you check that out if you haven't seen it already. Yesterday, a new DLC was announced for Farm Sub 22 the Farm Production Pack, releasing on Tuesday, April 30th for all platforms. It's a third-party DLC by Dutch Mining Inc., who are changing their name after the DLC releases to design, modeling, and innovation. The pack includes 24 buildings and placeables used as production cell points, but mostly just sheds. The new cell points do offer dynamic pricing and daily demand, similar to the way it was back at Farms 19 and 17. The DLC will cost you $7.99 USD and is not bundled with any season passes. It is a standalone DLC. If you'd like to pre-order it on PC, we'll leave a link down below for you. Likewise, this was the unknown app on Steam DB being updated yesterday morning. So no more wondering what's coming next. Looks like this will also be the last DLC for Farms from 22, but you never know. The name of the DLC, Farm Production Pack, might sound familiar to you, as Omatana released a mod pack a few years ago in Farms of 22 under the same name. However, that was recently changed in an update along with another mod that was called the Farm Production. Both with the same changelog, altered the mod name, no other changes have been made. They are now called Yard Production Pack and Farm Supply Productions. These changes were made by the mod up team, and Omontana did say it was okay, at least for one of them. Seeing this still worries me a little bit though, as it tells me that even well-established mods can have their names changed if a planned DLC has the same name. My guess is that no one saw the name discrepancy until it was too late, and there couldn't be a DLC and a mod with the same name. So almost Tana's mods had to have them changed. At least that's what it looks like from the outside looking in. So big news though, recently Giants expanded their QA team, and now they're expanding even more with new hirings going on for all of their offices around the world. Included is a community coordinator position in the German office, where Lars and Chucky are already there, including Kermit here in the United States. So looks like the community team is growing. Additionally, they are hiring 13 other positions in Germany, Czech Republic, Switzerland, and right here in the United States. The Chicago office in the U.S. is hiring a stagehand, which makes me wonder, are we getting FSL stages in the U.S.? This job title definitely says that, right? I'm not, I'm not just an idiot. You have to have a little bit of an idiot. Uh, this is all we've got so far, and I will keep you posted as it develops. So then, let's jump over to modern news, and we talk about Selubuki and their current plans for the rest of Farms of 22 and beyond. First, they're holding off plans for Murray, Iowa until the next game, assuming that the next game comes out later this year. If it doesn't, well, then they're going to be working on Murray for the end of 2024. Similar story with their Bosnian map. As for updates to Alma and Ravenport, they're both with Giants with Alma on the testing list right now. After the update to Alma, Missouri, Celebuki will be reaching out for permissions to include baby animals on that map in the future. That update will require a new game save and is planned for release sometime in June. Celebuki's still staying busy as they have teamed up with Mapper's Paradise to bring one of the largest grain and seed operations to your farm. 
Located near Swift Current, Canada, Monet Seeds. Hey, you guys know Monet Farms. This is a bulk grain and seed storage facility with a huge capacity. They're currently working on this together to bring it to Farm Sim 22 on all platforms. Some more big North American mods. Classic American Icons modding has their Big Bud Series 1 with Giants awaiting testing right now, complete with an optional Welker Farms logo and possibly more. For those of you that have been wanting to have an even more realistic Welker Farm setup on the map, well, this may be just what you're looking for. Hey, those are Map of Paradise as well. Of course, you can use it on any map. And lastly today, Agrotono dropped the spec list for their John Deere 8030 along with some Dimbo side quest tanks. Didn't even know they were doing those. The 8030 is going to have six different engines from 265 up to 445 horsepower, including the 8020T, 30, 840 models, all with a chiptune variant, wide and narrow tracks with normal or 3M extensions, weights or front hydraulic, Starfire 3000 or 6000 with the G4, of course, window 10, interior accessories, numbers, headlights, a light bar. It's support for precision farming, passenger seating, and winch. As for the side quest tanks, they're getting 1,000 and 1,200s, which hold liquid fertilizer or herbicide. These mods are all with giants right now, waiting testing. Guys, that is it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, get subscribed if you're new, and join the GoHam fam. Make sure that notification bell's on as well. That way, you never miss any videos here on the channel. All being said, just hope you have a great, awesome Wednesday, and we will see you Friday. Peace. So, a mod name had to be changed because of a DLC name. Is this right? Am I overthinking it too much? Let me know what you think.